Check, check, mic check. Check, check, mic check. <laughs> Welcome to Podcast Envy. I'm your podcast boss, Andrea Clender, and we have reached that time of year in Chicago where I have to be kind of chilly while I'm recording because my furnace is way too loud and there's absolutely no way I can record while it's on. Whew. Today, I have a very special treat for you. Well, anytime you hear me in your headphones, you know it's a special treat. But last time we were talking about values based podcasting. And in fact, I delivered a whole session at She Podcasts Live this month about this topic. And today, you are going to get to see values based podcast coaching in action. Yes, that's right. This is a Podcast Envy Office Hours episode in which you get to take a sneak peek behind the scenes at what it's like to do a coaching and consulting session with me. And our guests are so awesome. We had so much fun talking about podcasting together when we recorded this session that I actually decided to break it up into two episodes because we talked about so, 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 so much. And I wanted to give you a little bit of time to listen, digest, process, percolate, and see how you can put some of these tips, ideas, strategies, and questions into practice with your show, whether you are getting ready to launch, recently launched, or you've been podcasting like forever and you just need a refresh. I think this will give you some things to think about with your show. So who are we talking with today? We are talking with Stacey Lampkin and Mike Palazza a dynamic duo of advocates in the healthcare space for folks who want to have a less terrible experience in healthcare. Not only do Stacy and Mike have a passion for educating folks on both sides of the healthcare equation, i.e. patients and practitioners, they also have a combined professional knowledge that is out of this world. Stacy is a pediatric pharmacist turned patient advocate, and Mike is a social worker. And then they have such a powerful chemistry and rapport that I know this alchemy that is going to be healthcare behind the scenes is for sure a winning combination. And in this first episode, it became clear to me right away that their purpose was very clearly defined, which is where we normally start with our values based coaching. So we decided to dive right into getting specific about who their ideal listener is. And this was a challenge because as I mentioned a moment ago, they wanted to speak to both the patient and the practitioner. And not only that, Stacey and Mike weren't exactly on the same page when it came to where to put the focus. So that made for some interesting dialogue. And then we spent some time talking about crafting the perfect intro for your show, how to hook your listeners right away, and how to create that unique audio experience that you want them to have from the first few seconds of your show. I just know that you're going to have so much fun listening to Stacey and Mike, and you're going to learn a ton from our conversation. So let's get right to it. Stacey Lampkin, Mike Palazza, thank you so much for joining me on Podcast Envy. How are you feeling right now in this moment? Stacey, you first. Oh, gosh. Nervous. <laughs> and Mike? I'm excited to be here. <laughs> awesome. I would love to just begin by hearing what is the show that you are creating and why on earth do you want to do this? The show that we are creating is titled Healthcare Behind the Scenes. And I wanted to start a podcast and I happened to be talking about it with Mike after he had joined at the same place of an employment and he found it very interesting. So I asked him to join in. So that's kind of how we became co-hosts. We both ended up having a passion for educating about the healthcare system and more having real conversations about what goes on behind the scenes that patients might not be aware of happens. So kind of making people aware so that they can just be better advocates for their health. So my background is more the pharmacy side and I was a patient myself and realized how challenging it was to be a patient. And then a nice tie-in was Mike and his social work background. So we thought we actually complemented each other pretty well. Yeah. Stacy had originally planned on wanting to start a podcast, as she had stated. So she actually was just bringing it up. I was like, oh, yeah, like I always wanted to do a podcast at some point. Like I really had just brought up how it had always been an interest of mine. And Stacy was just then saying, well, 
do you want to join? I said, sure. And so from that point on, there have been many lunch sessions that turned into a lot of really good conversations. And that was really just more reassurance and approval that we were having some really good ideas that we were sharing. And it made me feel more confident that what we were wanting to talk about was really important. And for myself too, I have a lot of background in social work. I have my master's and a lot of human services and community experience. And I think that so many people with the healthcare system have such different experiences. And I feel that if like Stacy and I can be able to touch upon that and try and create solutions, not have it just be, here's all of the negative things that are happening in our <laughs> healthcare system and why. <laughs> it's, it's very much a positive approach. And that was why we wanted to start the podcast, because just through our conversations, we were having a lot of fun, but also brushing upon a lot of different topics. So it just naturally kind of progressed over time. So it sounds like you see a need in who your ideal listener would be. You see a gap in what information and resources are available to those of us accessing the healthcare system, which is like everybody. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and you have sort of like a benevolent community driven, like, I want to be helpful. I want to be a resource mission behind it. What do you imagine that you personally will get out of putting in the time, the money, the effort, the resources, the heart and soul into creating this show? And this is where you can totally be selfish and no one will judge you. <laughs> <laughs> I would say too, just even throughout this whole experience, I feel like it's been very fulfilling both personally and professionally. I feel like it is allowing me to be able to have a creative outlet outside of work, to be able to learn not only more about myself, like I, I very much enjoy taking on new experiences and challenges. I feel like that's how we grow as people and professionals. And I think that through this, I'll be able to have learned a, a lot more about the healthcare system for myself, even that if I'm going to be working in this field professionally for the rest of my career, that I'm going to be a much better social worker as a whole to be able with any other clients or families that I come across on my professional journey. And then also, it's just really good experience, I think, moving forward to be able to create like our own personal brand that Stacy's talked a lot about too, about being able to market yourself and trying to grow your areas of interest. And she's really helped me a lot in terms of being a good self-advocate. Yeah, I have some similar remarks to that. The, I guess, selfish reason we'll start with first would be I am trying to expand and do patient advocacy education and coaching. And I want to create courses and classes and I want to just start networking. So I thought more and broadening my community. So I thought this would be kind of a good avenue to do that. And then just in general, as a passion, I love hearing people's stories. And we often don't get to even do that in healthcare because we're time bound during patient visits. So I think it gives me an opportunity to listen to like stories and actually have others. So while I, I think our goal is more Hopefully patients listen to it and anybody can be a patient at any time, but I think there could also be an opportunity for healthcare workers to hear stories that they might not hear otherwise too, as we share, or if we have healthcare worker guests down the line that they can also hear stories about other healthcare workers so they don't feel alone or in any of the systems. Yeah. I mean, we did talk about connecting with people we know, but then a lot of it too is expanding. There's a lot of voices out there that don't get a chance to be heard. So mm -hmm. we also hope that we can help amplify other voices too, especially like I said, patient stories that often don't get to hear their kind of their side of the healthcare journey. Definitely. Yeah. And I think that you touch on something really important, which is this idea of using the podcast not only as a platform to educate or promote, but also as a mechanism by which you build community and network. And sometimes I think even if nobody ever listened to my show, as long as the people I'm inviting to be guests didn't know that no one was listening to the show, <laughs> it would still be valuable to me because it would give me the opportunity to have in-depth 
very intimate, really, conversations with a wide range of people who normally would have not really necessarily any opportunity or need to have that conversation with me. There's something more compelling about asking somebody to be a guest on your podcast and have a conversation with you there than to say, oh, let's grab a cup of coffee sometime, right? Definitely. (laughs) A little bit more of a (laughs) win-win-win. Yeah. So yeah, there is something really important about that community building aspect and also the advocacy aspect of bringing in other people's voices. So for listeners who can't see us, we are three white people sitting here talking about this, you know, who probably have a lot of similarities in terms of like our socioeconomic background and in terms of different life experiences. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I think is really a great opportunity in the podcasting space is the ability to bring in diverse voices, the ability to branch out from your bubble and bring on people who may have a totally different perspective than us or a different opinion. And I think that the concept that you're creating really lends itself to that. So we have some specific questions here around the launch and preparing the show. And then we also have more of just a broad question about podcasting strategy in general and launch tips. What would you say right now is the most pressing question for you or the most pressing area where you'd like to begin? I would probably say that intros and outros is probably the more pressing because we've been really going back and forth on how we should flow our program, like how we should structure it in terms Mm -hmm. of some of that like medical terminology that we know will come Mm -hmm. up on the podcast and like where's the best fit for it. Yeah. So any of these questions, when you talk about intros and outros, you talk about the terminology and the language that's going to be coming up. Anytime we're talking about these pieces of the podcast, we're talking about format and structure. And any format or structure question is always going to come to a more natural conclusion about what you should do when you specifically think about your listener. And you identified two categories already in our conversation. One is the person who is the patient, the potential patient, the person who is using the healthcare system in that capacity. And then you also mentioned other healthcare workers who maybe don't have as much time to hear these personal stories or who maybe feel frustrated by the system that they're working in or feel like they're alone in their frustrations. But what I encourage people to do is to think of one specific person who is your ideal listener. And if you've done any kind of marketing stuff where they tell you to come up with like a client avatar or something like that, no, I hate that exercise. I want you to think of a real life person that you know, someone who you actually know, who you hope that that person would listen to your show, whether they do or not, who knows. But like for me, I could say Stacey Lamkin is my podcast envy listener. And so Every choice that I make about my show is going to be, how does this help Stacy? What does Stacy think about this choice? Where does this fit into what she needs and what she will be getting out of the show? And so I wonder if you've had a chance to think about this or if you've thought that deeply about like one particular real life person who would be the person you would make all your decisions around. I don't think we've actually had that much of a conversation. We kind of kept it pretty general on patients, which is funny because I've done that exercise for like myself and my <laughs> <laughs> other, my oh, Stacey Lampkin business, but I haven't done, no, we have not done that together. It's hard because when you're launching a show, you want to have as many listeners as possible. And a lot of the advice out there is like how to grow your show, how to get more listeners. And so it's almost counterintuitive to think of one person. So if you were to think of that one person and you don't have to know who it is right now, what would you imagine that they are getting out of listening to the show? So you can pick right now either a patient or a healthcare worker. Which direction do you want to go? I think patient. I was thinking more of a healthcare worker. <laughs> I swear we were on the same page. This is why you're in (laughs) podcast therapy right now. (laughs) (laughs) It's 
funny how podcast coaching can sometimes turn into podcast therapy. I am not a licensed therapist, but I am a darn good podcast coach. And if you are thinking, oh my God, Andrea, I need more of you in my podcasting life, you're probably right. And I have great news for you. In this podcast angel segment, I'm going to tell you all about the ways that you can work with me. Whether you're looking for one deep dive strategy session like I had with Stacy and Mike, a long-term coaching relationship where we have time to develop some key aspects of your show, or you're looking to develop and launch your show for the first time, I have something for you. Right now, I'm taking names. That's right. I'm taking names for people who want to work with me in early 2022. I can't even believe that's a year that's here. But here we are. If you are hoping to launch a brand new show in the first quarter of 2022, that's January, February, or March, you should be working on it right now. And maybe you need my help. Right now, you can get your name on my wait list for the next spot to open up for a complimentary podcast tea date. That's a complimentary 20-minute session in which we will pin down what is the right next step for you and how can I support you in taking that step. Oh, and if you want to do an episode of Office Hours like Stacy and Mike did, that's totally an option too. And those sessions are completely complimentary because all of our community then gets to learn from what you and I do together. To get your name on my secret list for strategy sessions, launch consulting, or office hour sessions in 2022, go to thecreativeimposter.com forward slash save my spot. That's thecreativeimposter.com forward slash save my spot. And you know where that link is. It is conveniently located for you in the show notes, in the episode description, in your app, and at thecreativeimposter.com forward slash podcast. Pod NV 090 for episode 90. Don't wait to join the list. If you want to do something new in early 2022, sign up now so we can make a date. Let's do it this way. So Stacy, let me ask you. So for a patient who is listening to this show that already exists, that you've already created, what is it that they are getting out of listening to the show? Why are they coming here to tune in right now out of all the shows they could be listening to and all the other activities they could be participating in in this moment? So the big thing would be awareness and in terms of like, what is the healthcare system? Because you will eventually have to go to a a doctor or if it's not for yourself, it could be for a family member, friend. So how to making sure that you are aware of some of the nuances of the healthcare system so that when you're there and you get told that you aren't going to be seen for six weeks, how can you advocate for maybe getting a sooner appointment and just kind of bringing awareness? Because I often, as I've been talking to different people who've entered the healthcare system, there's this rose colored glasses view that like when I get there, they will help me. But at the same time, there's also this like, I don't ever want to use the healthcare system. So it's kind of like this odd dynamic I hear people say is like, I don't want to ever use it. But I assume once I do use it, it'll be perfect. So I kind of want to bring more awareness to that piece of it's not perfect. So here's how to prepare so you're not caught off guard. And then we don't have this vicious cycle of never wanting to go back or not knowing what to do or having kind of that dynamic. And I'm going to push you a little bit further on this because I'm going to guess that I, as your ideal listener, who is a patient of the healthcare system, who had a frustrating experience with the doctor, I don't want awareness. That's not what I want. I'm not listening to your show because I want to be more aware. Why am I listening to your show? So more for that tip so that you, I would hope that you'd want to stand up for yourself (laughs) and speak up and feel comfortable in that environment and say like, yes, this is my health. I have control. So I would probably say, I guess, past the awareness piece of the tips and strategies of that you do have more control in some of those environments when you, even if you're being told no, or if you don't like what they said, you can get different opinions. Yeah. So I imagine that though you're using a storytelling method from the stories, the idea would be, oh, as a result of hearing that person's experience or hearing that story, I now have language or resources that I can consult. Like I know where to look for this information. Mm -hmm. I know what to ask for. And also I would say probably the first word that came up was empowerment. And I dislike that word because it is assuming that you do not have power. (laughs) I know that's the word I can never think of a better one either, but yeah. It's like the encouragement 
encouragement or the the support that you can that you have the ability to advocate for yourself so it's like that is what I would say would be why I would be listening to your show yeah and I think the language piece now that you said that is super important because it is a different it is literally a different language and there are certain words that if you say will get different results than if you don't say and that's healthcare, unfortunately that we all have to enter And then Mike, so your ideal listener would be the healthcare provider is what you were thinking. So that one healthcare provider who's tuning into your show, why are they tuning in? What are they getting out of listening right now in this moment? I feel that it would allow them to be a better healthcare worker, not only as a physician or any other medical field, but also just to be able to give a better understanding of their patients. Because I think sometimes too, we can now have our own self biases or ideas of how we think we're doing, what our field is about. And I think to be able to get a behind the scenes approach from two people that are in the field may be able to provide you a lot more insight about what is going on that you may not be thinking about for yourself and to give you a lot better understanding. And also part of the reason I think I immediately went to healthcare worker is because so many of the people that have already approached me about the podcast are people that already are working in the field. Mm -hmm. But then it's technically too that we forget that there are also patients. It's a double edged sword because you're a healthcare worker and you're a patient and I'm a patient and I was your healthcare worker and then you're a host. So you have all three intertwined. So it's providing multiple perspectives and kind of trying to put those all together and to be able Mm. to see how can I present this in a way that is accepting and is going to allow the listener that is hearing from this to grow. And I think that's another thing, just because you're in healthcare and you're a professional in the field, you always have more to learn. And so even if you have a master's or a license or a new certification, our field is always changing. And I think the day that we stop Mm -hmm. learning is when we stop growing. Yeah. So it's almost like tips and strategies is what Stacey originally said for the patient for advocating for yourself. But it's also almost like tips and strategies for the conscientious healthcare worker who really does want to do better by their patients to know like, this is how we can think of this differently, or this is how I can work this in, or this is how I can help. And I assume that there's a lot of frustration from people who work in the space. Right. And so I think that the same takeaway could be for both of those listeners. So I would think about where is that overlap where you're delivering one specific thing, but it happens to benefit both people. I think that there's a way to look at that. And so getting back to the question of intros and outros and how to structure that, basically you can have two different levels. So there can be a show level intro that is the same episode to episode. So those are the ones that you hear when you're listening to a podcast. And it starts off exactly the same way with the same voiceover week after week. And the same thing, you can also have an outro at the end that is pre-recorded. It's the same week after week after week. The benefit of having something that's pre-recorded and that's the same week after week after week is that it is less work that you have to do every time you sit down to record. It builds familiarity with the listener, which is good because what you want is you want listening to your show to become a habit psychologically for your listener. And so they hear it and they're like, oh, it's healthcare behind the scenes with Stacey and Mike. Yay. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> They hear that theme music and they're like, oh, I'm in the right place. You know, whatever it is, whatever the theme music makes them feel. But the the downside of a pre-recorded intro, especially if it's too long, is that once people have heard it like once or twice, they're like, oh, and they want to like skip oh, yes. through it because it's like, I don't need to hear the show where we provide tips and strategies for how to navigate the healthcare system. They don't want to hear it a million times usually. True. So there is also a way to do a fresh intro or a fresh outro every time that every time you sit down to record, you record it, even if the words are the same or similar. You can do that at the show level and then you can do that at the episode level. So let's say, for the show level, there's like a very quick thing. It's the theme music. And then it's like, welcome to the podcast. And then you have an episode intro that is recorded fresh each time that sets up what is about to happen. Now, it doesn't matter which one you choose. 
honestly, it just depends on your workflow and the style that you want. I happen to be a big fan of things that are fresh every time with something that anchors it in the familiarity. Like maybe the music is enough. The first few notes of the music, maybe one quick phrase, and then you go into the actual fresh new content. In general, I think most people's intros are too long. Five seconds is enough. Five seconds, 10 seconds. These like 30 second, one minute intros are just too long. And part of the reason why I'm saying that is that there's also a trend right now in listeners and in the way podcasts are discovered by new listeners, where now that podcasts are coming out in like Google searches and the top podcast app for listening is still Apple Podcasts. And in Apple Podcasts, the way that they're displaying podcasts now, they are de-emphasizing the act of subscribing to a new show and they are emphasizing play the latest episode. Mm -hmm. That's the action that Apple Podcasts wants the listener to do is play the latest episode. And so if they click play, then you want that person within like five seconds to know that this is what they want to be listening to right now. And so however you can deliver that in an intro is the way that you're going to hook that listener in that first five to 10 seconds. So whether it's pre-recorded or whether it's fresh, either way, you want that listener in the first five to 10 seconds to know that it's for them and why they should be listening. That sounds super easy. <laughs> Which, right? Which is without saying, this is for you if, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, this podcast is for you if. Or like, so yeah, more than just... Hi, this is Mike. <laughs> Stay in the South Carolina behind the scenes. And if you repeat that every episode, they'll be like, all right, yep, bye. There is like some repetitive, like you are also building a relationship with them. So you do want them to hear you welcome them every time. They do okay. want to hear your voice. The listener will come to your show because it has good information or it's something they're interested in the first time. But they'll keep listening because they will know, like, and trust you by the end of that episode. And they'll keep coming back week after week because they know, like, and trust you. And that's the same with podcasting as with any, like, marketing or personal brand or anything like that. And it's that relationship with the hosts that keeps them listening to your show as opposed to any other show that might be out there about the healthcare system, right? That's a really good point. So these are what are some of the nuts and bolts of, like, what should be in your intro is who it's for and why they should listen. And there are a million different ways to do that. It should have music that creates the feeling that you want them to walk away with. So, you know, you could have music that makes them hopeful and inspired. And I'm saying these corny words because when you do a music search in like, if you go to a royalty-free music database. We went through some music this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and there was, there was some interesting ones that came up. And then we were, we were just like, all right, we got to end now because we could spend all day trying to look up music. It's for sure a rabbit hole that you can really spend a lot of time in. And you'll see like, oh, inspiring, motivational, corporate, <laughs> you know, like you see these, these corny kind of like things, but you do actually want to think about when I hear this music, how does it make me feel? And is that the feeling that I want my listeners to have? Because, you know, there's a difference between something that's energizing and then something that's like inspiring. Like it just has like different qualities to it. Mike, that's all you. You're the feelings person. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's on your to do like, list. All right. Perfect. Write down song and feeling attached to song. Report right? to Stacy and she'll be able to cross it off the list. And you so. want to think about your voice. It's almost like it's less important what you say as to how your voice sounds in the intro because it's setting the tone, it's the feeling, it's the vibe. So it's like if someone were to arrive at your house, for like a dinner party or a brunch or something like that, how would you open the door and greet that person? If you greet that person and you're like, hi, oh my gosh, it's so great to see you. It's been so long. That is setting a different vibe than like, hi, welcome. How's it going? You know, like both can be really nice ways to greet somebody, but it's going to create a different tone and a different vibe. And a lot of times I think people in their intros try to sound too official or too announcery or like, this is the such and such show with. That's what we've sounded like the few times yeah. we've practiced. The few times we've recorded. <laughs> we have our healthcare professional voices on. And we're like, no, that's not. We want to sound professional, but we don't want 
we want to sound inviting because right oftentimes you don't get that vibe when you walk into a healthcare office. Yeah, exactly. So just like trying a few different things and like recording it a few different ways with something that you think when the moment when you're recording, you're like, this is going to be way too casual, but let's just do it this way, you know, or this is going to be way too silly or way too corny. And you just try it and then you find the one that feels honestly the most natural. So Bye. all of that is to say... Keep it short, keep it welcoming, keep it conversational. The intro is like inviting the person in and making sure that they know they're in the right place. That makes total sense. Podcast Envy is produced by your podcast boss, Andrea Klunder. That's me. The Podcast Envy theme music is by Valentin Sosnitsky, courtesy of the Free Sound Project at freesound.org. And our podcast angel music is by Benjamin Masterpolito, also on freesound.org as Lemon Cream. All music is licensed under the Creative Commons. Our episodes are mixed by Edwin Ruiz. And hey, if you want your show to sound as good as ours, hire us. Put the magic audio mojo of the Creative Imposter Studios to work for you. Thanks so much for listening, and here's to making your podcast the envy of everyone else.